Silver eyes $50 in 2025 as industrial demand grows and the gold to silver ratio narrows. This is from Kitco News. Silver has struggled to keep pace with gold over the past year as the yellow metal hit multiple new record highs while its great counterpart largely remained pinned below $30 an ounce. But according to one analyst, that could change in 2025 and the gold to silver ratio will start to moderate from its recent highs, which I could not agree with more. Silver already is above that $30 an ounce underpin point that nobody thought we could break above, but now we are comfortably sitting above. And take my word for it, eyes will shift, new money will come in, investors that have never touched a single stock or even precious metals at that will be looking at silver. And that is because people are realizing or will be realizing that silver is not just gold. You cannot put silver in the same box as gold. If you are looking at silver through the lens of gold, you will be sadly mistaken and you will miss out because silver has opportunity much, much greater than gold, even with gold doing astronomically well right now and silver still, as they put it, sitting at this $30 underpin, which right now it's comfortably sitting above as it's hit $35 is still nowhere near the type of profits or potential that we are trying to get across. So gold remains an investor favorite for hedging portfolios against various risks, but the shift from a soft landing to a no landing argues for greater balance between defensiveness and exposure to economic growth, wrote Julian Wee. And I did want to mention something. A lot of people don't know there is a much, much bigger gold market than silver. It's not even comparable. And that's why silver is so much more volatile is because gold has such a bigger market. It's also why it's easier to manipulate. So silver has historically been strongly correlated with gold while being better able to benefit from expanding industrial demand. Amid the rise in geopolitical tensions, gold has emerged as the preferred way to hedge risk, we noted, highlighting that the yellow metal has risen as much as 35% and demand continues to robust in multiple risk events and falling policy rates globally. This month, at, le at least, uh, gold seems to have shown itself as the choice hedge against the risk of slower economic growth and an acceleration in inflation. And I mean, silver is up like 80% in the last two years alone. Both of these metals are doing astronomically well and anyone who is is trying to downplay them either has some type of resentment or they are guilty they're kicking themselves in the butt because they missed out or ego or whatever but usually it's not there there's no uh there's no logic behind it it's all emotional but gold is not the only precious metal whose price demonstrates an inverse relationship to risk aversion, he said against the backdrop of the resilient U.S. GDP growth. Investors might do well to consider in addition to portfolios that retains a good amount of defensiveness while also incrementally adding uh, that retains a good amount of defensiveness while also incrementally adding to the ability of these portfolios to benefit from stronger economic growth, which is silver. It's the best of both worlds. So we joined the list of analysts warning that gold is due for a correction after months of only up price action, saying that the most recent gains were driven by growing expectations of Donald Trump's win of the U.S. presidential race. And I just made a video about that earlier today. If you guys want to go check that out, that will be posted or this will be posted tomorrow. So go check out the video I made yesterday about uh, Trump's win and how that affected the gold and silver markets. Um, but yeah, so in particular in the trade tariffs, a higher U.S. fiscal deficit, potentially slower GDP growth, and higher inflation. Data from the World Gold Council shows that total demand has grown 5% year-on-year, with the quarterly total valued exceeding $100 billion for the first time, he noted. Demand also appears to be broadened out even 
as Asian central bank demand res uh, remains resilient. Third quarter 2024 was the first quarter of since for uh, 2021, which we saw positive inflows from North American-based ETFs as the Federal Reserve embarked on its rate-cutting cycle. So while UBS still recommends a 5% allocation of gold into a diversified U.S.-denominated portfolio, expecting its price to rise to 2900 an ounce uh, by September 25, we said is also a strong play as it is set to benefit from spillover demand. And I mean, $2,900 gold doesn't seem too crazy as it's already like 27 something. And the same with $37 silver doesn't seem too crazy. I mean, none of these prices seem crazy, especially when you look at the dollar deflating. It costs so much more to buy groceries. So you could also use the same logic that it costs more to buy silver. But it's actually not silver's price going up. It's the dollar's value going down. And that's the one part that a lot of people miss. Historically, the price of silver has demonstrated a high correlation with the price of gold, he highlighted. Since July 2020, the gold-silver ratio has been largely constrained within the 75-90 range. And this is especially salient from the fourth quarter of 2022, as both silver and gold prices rose around 70% that time. While gold will likely remain vehicle for hedging risk which still i mean don't get me wrong gold is a great way to store your wealth silver as another precious metal is likely to benefit as well we said but in addition to uh, that silver also benefits to greater degree from gold resilient economic growth and growing industrial demand from something that might be useful for positioning portfolios to take advantage of the robust global economy while maintaining a degree of insulation against events risks in the coming months so it's like the best of both worlds like i was mentioning silver benefits where gold does but gold doesn't benefit where silver does but they both are great they're both safe havens recent data points that the u.s has pointed out a greater likelihood of a no landing scenario benign and that's gdp growth with inflation close to the fed's target and the growth at slash above trend rather than a soft landing, he explained. Additionally, we expect lower rates, not least of all in China, to kickstart a modest recovery in global manufacturing, which adds to silver's industrial demand potential. With its heavy use in tech and electric vehicle sectors, steady demand coming from the production of LEDs, solar panels, and applications in the medical field due to silver's antibacterial properties, we said industrial demand will likely see additional demand from physically backed ETFs, withholding already rising from 684 million ounces in May to around 741 million ounces in October. And on the supply side, mining output should remain constrained in 2025. And I mean, I interview the CEO of one of the biggest silver miners, Dolly Varden. I interview Sean Kun Kun, you know, and I talk to the to these guys that dig it out of the ground themselves. And I'll be visiting one of their mining sites. Silver it has nobody wants to mine silver out of the ground right now. But since it's so cheap, why waste the materials? Why waste the time and the money and the costs to to mine something that's only thirty something dollars? Why not wait till it's a hundred dollars? And even so. Silver is a byproduct. There's very few silver mines. Dolly Varden is one of them. But even with them, I mean, he's found, Sean's found, I think, 65 million ounces of silver. He found over a million ounces of gold as byproduct. But when we're talking about a 1.2 billion ounce uh, demand this year or, you know, a 770 million ounce deficit in the last four years, this this stuff isn't fixable. This stuff isn't replaceable. Recycling isn't going to just fix this. We don't have enough silver in vaults to just fix or cure this problem, as some will say. So um, anyways, you know, this is a pretty long article, but um, let's just kind of wrap it up. They do say that they expect prices to reach 36 to 38 
dollars an ounce in 2025 and i mean silver was just one dollar away from that already like last week so that's nothing too crazy to say and advise investors to stay long in the metal and use it for yield pickup opportunities last week's fall in silver prices makes it a 6.2 percent consolidation from the late october high of 34.83 so yeah what do you think i definitely think that um something big is brewing and i think that we're just going to have to hold our hats i think the best thing to do is just buy and just hold it don't try to do too much don't overcomplicate it it's very simple it's probably the easiest thing to invest in because all you gotta do is just buy it and hold it you don't have to check the prices and do day trade trading or marginal trading or check all this and do all that just buy some and hold it that's all you got to do. And if you wanted to do that, I got the best place for you to do that. Just email slayer at milesfranklin.com or call 330-485-6172 and I will hook you up with some great prices. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Make sure you check out the video I made yesterday talking about Donald Trump and what happened to Silver after he won. Thanks for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.